I started working in the oil fields when I was about 12 or less or somewhere in there. I worked derricks and lead tones and backed up and everything that you can do in an oil field. When did you decide to say, I'm just going to go play the guitar? <laughs> when I learned I could pick the guitar a little bit and sing and uh, then, you know, words started coming and uh, and then somebody would ask me, are you a musician? I said, no, I'm a roughneck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> sure you are. Yeah. You know? After a short stint back in Mississippi, Hank got the urge to roam and headed to California where his songwriting and vocal talents won several amateur contests. Inspired by his contest wins, Hank decided it was time to do what he loved professionally. He began to look for a guitar player, and as fate would have it, he met Eddie Cochran, a kindred soul who shared his passion for music. Though they weren't related, the two, still in their teens, decided to hit the stage as the Cochran Brothers. Hank Cochran arrived in Nashville, Tennessee in January of 1960 and started writing for Pamper Music, earning $50 a week. Before long, he was promoted and began to manage artist relations for the company as well. We were uh, sitting at Tootsie's, up, up in the back of Tootsie's, and we was having like a guitar pull. So I sang a few songs and somebody else sung a few songs and it come around to him and he sung a few songs. Hank Okra was there and uh, he liked the songs that I was writing. Willie, who wrote those songs? And he said, I did. I said, who's your publisher? And he said, I don't have one. Nobody seems to want them. I said, if you can make it out to um, Goodlesville tomorrow, you won't be able to say that. The next day, I think, he introduced me to Hal Smith, who ran Pamper Music, and told him he thought that I should be a writer for Pamper Music. And he said, uh, well, I have to have $50, at least $50 a week, you know, to live. I got a wife and three kids. And I said, well, let me go in and talk to Hal. And Hal said, well, you know, I'm not sure we can afford to pay a new writer. And Hank said, well, you know, I'm supposed to get a $50 a week raise starting this week. Just give that to Will." and let's sign him, and I'll have somebody to work with, and so forth. And he said, you sure? And I said, I'm sure. So that's how I got hooked up with uh, Parent for Music, and uh, because of Hank. Hank always fell in love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how he could write these songs. And when he fell in love, he would marry him. He didn't have to. He'd just marry him and let the, let the, the guards fall. And he said, man, I was driving back to the office, and he thought to himself, I got to write that song. I know I can write that song. He said he went back, opened his desk drawer, and there was a picture of his old girlfriend sitting there. And he thought, I got the picture, and he's got you. And he said, damn, that's it. And he said, I wrote that song in 20 minutes. And he said, I went and I called Patsy Klein immediately and said, I got your song. I got it. And she said, well, go to town and buy us a bottle and come out here and play it for me. He said, I'll never forget walking in that door. And uh, she unscrewed the top and threw it across the room, took a hit, and uh, said, play me that song. And he said, I played it. And she said, that's it. Let's call Owen. And he says, oh, that was the story on She's Got You. Big, big hit. I got the picture that you gave to And it's signed with love Just like it used to be The only thing different The only thing new I got the picture He's got you it's one thing to be a successful songwriter, um, but it's another thing to be you, to write things that are that important. The songs you've written are very, very, very important to country music. 
40 years worth of not just just radio hits, but songs that actually have meaning and, and substance that you can uh, uh, apply to life. Mike definitely should be in the Country Music Hall of Fame. He showed all these new writers how to do it. He's one of the greatest country songwriters of all time. You can't really say how important Hank is. I mean, it, if you take him away and the foundation's gone. I think he's the Ernest Hemingway of country music. For over 50 years as a writer, producer, and song plugger, Hank Cochran's quiet, unassuming hand gave us some of country music's greatest hits and shaped the careers of some of its biggest stars. But unlike theirs, Hank Cochran's will never be a household name. It is simply carved into the cornerstone, part of the foundation upon which Nashville and country music stand. Hank Cochran made his mark, and it will never be erased. And I write mine, I'll always be living for a song. Till I write mine, I'll always be. Well, it was just my life, you know. I just wrote, which I do like most of the things I write. It's just come from, you know, that's living for a song. Whew.